So welcome to three part video series on getting started with developing and integrating Oracle SOA with K21 Academy. My name is Atul Kumar and with me I have SOA expert Sumit who will be sharing some basic concepts around the SOA. So this is fairly very basic for beginners who have no idea about what a SOA is or how to kickstart their career in Oracle SOA. So this is going to be a three part series, but in future, depending on the feedback, we might add some more content. So let me first explain you what we are going to cover in this three part video series. So we'll start with introduction to SOA where Sumit will tell about SOA and SOA as a loosely coupled application in video one. Then in video two, he will go into a little bit more in concepts related to services, what a service is, what are messages, what is orchestration and a very in layman's term difference between SOA versus OSP. Then in the third video, we'll be wrapping it up with what exactly is a web service in SOA, brief dis description about SOAP and REST based web services. And finally, we'll tell about our training program so that you can take your these learning into the next level by learning SOA development. Now in future, depending on the demand or the feedback we receive, we may add more and more lessons or more and more free videos related to the basic getting started with Oracle SOA. Before I hand over this to Sumit, let me introduce a little bit about K21 Academy. K21 Academy is a leading online training portal and we are Oracle Gold partner with 1600 plus students in various Oracle related courses. We provide end to end right from Oracle Cloud to the databases for DBAs, SOA as you are listening this training, then SOA administration, Oracle Fusion Middleware, Oracle eBusiness Suite, Apps DBA, Identity and Access Management and lot more. We have 50 plus corporate customers and here are some of our happy customers who have gone through these corporate trainings. Apart from that, we have individuals who attend our training portal, both live as well as self-study learning portal. Now I won't hold up too much. Let me quickly explain about me, who am I and about Sumit, and then I'll hand it over to Sumit. I'm Atul Kumar. I'm an Oracle Ace since year 2006 and I have 16 plus years of experience and Oracle certified consultant on Fusion Middleware, Identity and Access Management, Apps DBA, SOA and now started learning on cloud as well. I'm author of two books. I blog on online Apps DBA with 1 million views in year 2016 and I'm founder of K21 Academy company specializing in SOA, Fusion Middleware, EBS, DBA, Cloud, and various other trainings. And I have with me Sumit, your instructor, who started his career as an Oracle SOA developer and worked with a lot of different companies on different integration. And now these days, he started sharing his knowledge on Oracle SOA. He has trained 200 plus IT consultants and an Oracle certified professional. Now I'll very quickly cover our training methodology, which we do in our paid program. And then I'll hand it over to Sumit. So we provide pre-recorded videos in advance before the live actual live session so that when you attend the session, live session or live training program, you know what kind of questions to ask. We provide dedicated machine to practice, also a WhatsApp group for support, unlimited retake for next one year, and post session, you also get lifetime access to the recordings on portal. Now, if you are watching or listening this video somewhere else, don't forget to register for our upcoming webinars. These are free webinars on k21academy.com forward slash webinar dash SOA dash dev. Now with that, I hand it over to Sumit and thanks for listening, getting started with developing and integrating Oracle SOA suite. So let me introduce myself guys. Uh, my name is uh, Sumit Kumar. Okay, I have been working in Oracle SOA since last eight years. So I started my career as a SOA developer and since then I have been working 
on different integrations with different MNCs and uh, four to five years back I started you know sharing my knowledge on SUA. I worked with different corporates to train the people on Oracle SUA suit. I also work on USB and BPM but my main expertise is Oracle SUA suit. So we'll take it, I'll take you along with about Oracle SUA suit. So what I'll do is uh, we'll walk through slides little late at first I would try to explain you using a notepad so guys you know this SOA is a keyword or a buzz in the market okay which is right now a hot kick in the market and we have different versions of SOA there are a lot of things which are running in the market about SOA so let's understand everything one by one first of all this SOA stands for service oriented architecture so at first let me tell you this is an architecture a lot of people confuses it with the technology so SOA is not a technology it is a design philosophy which you know IT giants follow to basically handle their enterprise more effectively in a more agile manner which helps them to you know basically have a better command on their business and to basically generate more revenues. So the baseline of this architecture depends on two entities one is so if I say SOA the SOA would be basically dependent on two entities one is services and the other is messages. And we, have, we also need to understand that there have been a lot of technologies before SOA, uh, there have been a lot of approaches before SOA. What made SOA so famous in the market or so popular in the market that most of the IT companies are looking forward to implement SOA into their existing IT infrastructure. So we have to see from that perspective also. So if I have to define SOA in a layman language, I will say SOA is a middleware solution which makes two or more systems or applications to talk to each other okay and we all know like middleware is something which is nothing but a software glue middleware itself is a software which makes two or more systems to talk to each other in a more agile manner or there might be two systems or applications which are not compatible to each other but having this middleware makes this communication possible so it's something like we have two people from two different countries who might not be knowing some common language so we get a interpreter who does this conversion so let's say there is a person from Japan who knows Japanese and there is a person from China who knows Chinese so we need to make these people to talk to each other so we definitely need some intermediate three person or some intermediary mechanism which makes this communication possible and same thing goes you know well in our IT market as well so when we have different applications for an enterprise we somehow need to integrate these applications we want the data to flow from one application to another or some at times we need to you know basically collect the data from different applications for doing our analysis to take some business decisions so this integration will be a very integral and important part of any IT company or maybe uh, or any business so uh, I said SOA is a middleware solution which makes two or more systems or applications to talk to each other this is an you know layman language definition so now there is a there are few jargons which are associated whenever we talk about SOA one is it is a loosely coupled architecture okay whenever you talk about SOA whenever you go through any blog you would always go through a jargon that it is a loosely coupled architecture so let's try to understand what does loosely coupled would mean so loosely coupled would mean that there is something which can make two or more systems to talk to each other in an agile manner provided that dependency of the systems which are required to be integrated is minimal so let's say there are two applications which are required to be integrated with one another so just one thing um, someone was asking give us a practical example so to give an a practical example let's suppose you have one system which is an order management system which is one application and another application is fulfillment which says the uh, the delivery or the invoices so how does a invoicing system will talk to the order management system and that's where what Sumit is saying will make sense in terms of how do these two systems will talk to each other over to you Sumit so I was saying uh, it is a loosely coupled architecture when I say loosely coupled architecture it would mean that there are different systems different applications within an enterprise which might be you know developed in different languages using different technologies or those might be running under different platform altogether now there is a need to basically integrate these applications for my business in such a manner that if at all uh, an application fails that that should not create an impact on all the existing applications so if I have A to Z 26 applications within my enterprise so failure or failover of one application should not 
have an adverse impact on all other my applications which might lead to you know my business impact so in order to avoid that we we introduce soa and this is basically a loosely coupled architecture so before soa also we used to use different mechanisms of integration so let's say there is a system a which needs to talk with system b okay as atul mentioned like there may there may be different you know we have enterprise applications to for for payroll management for billing for for inventory management we have different applications so now when these these systems need to talk to each other it's not the case that when soa was not there at that point in time the systems were not talking to each other there were different ways of doing it so one of the ways was we were doing point to point integration which is also called p2p integration so point to point integration is something where two systems talk to each other directly okay and there is exchange of these there is exchange of data between these two systems directly so that might happen in xml format so let's say there is an application a which is developed in dotnet okay and there is an application b which is developed in java so they these two uh, you know languages have their own proprietary mechanism of compilation we have all different syntaxes so somehow this data has to be exchanged so we might have different classes in java or the ways in dotnet to convert that piece of code or the command into some native format or a universal form universal understandable format which is something like xml and then the data can flow from a to b or b to a vice versa but the basic disadvantage of this approach is if let's say b fails now then or if b is unavailable for some time because of any reason any xyz reason b is unavailable then this starts impacting my business okay there is a complete failover or i can say if let's say a new system is required to be added so my business grows i add more applications i need to manage things more effectively if i have to add one new application over here then i will have to establish a connectivity between a to c and b to c so you understand earlier i had two system things look very simpler to me okay there is a point to point integration why do i need to invest so much in my it infrastructure but when my enterprise says grows okay i keep on adding new systems like b after b came c now c needs to have a connectivity with a as well as a b and suppose i add one more system d so now d will have to need to have connectivity with c b and a as as well so what happens is if you see the as your number of system increases your number of connections which are required to be established grows exponentially and the dependency of the systems which are being integrated is very very high so this point to point integration methodology looks good when number of systems which are required to be integrated are minimal but as you grow grow as your business grow and you have more applications to manage your enterprise you will find that you know this basically leads to a major drawback which basically starts impacting your business so this is not considered to be an agile way of basically integrating your application so when i see the similar you know implementation using soa what happens is as i mentioned soa is a middleware solution which makes two or more systems to talk to each other so it basically makes sure that the systems which are being integrated do not know about each other so when let's say system a is required to be integrated to b or c or d like so we, these systems need not to know each other like a need not to have any information about b a need not to know which format of the, which format of language like b understands it need to it need not to know like what should be the structure of the data which b need to understand what is the a's duty is it should be able to pass its messages to soa somehow now soa when we say like i am using the bigger terminology soa here as of now but there are a lot of things within the soa so soa is smart enough or capable enough with different features within itself which allows us uh, which allows you know developer or the architect to do the different transformations routings in such a manner that it converts that format of data which was received from a into an understandable format for b and that data is passed to b now what happens is now let's say one more system comes in which is let's say c now the beauty is c need not to talk to need not to know about b c need not to know about a just c need to plug in with soa c, c needs to connect with soa layer and with the, since a and b are already connected with soa layer so a can route the data to b or c depending on our business requirement on a very similar note b can route the data to a and c using the soa layer a 
apart from that, the other major advantages we have with using the SOA layer is in scenarios where let's say one of our system goes down or it is unavailable, it crashes because of some reason. Okay, then within SOA we have got different features or we have fault handling mechanisms which allows us to do a auto retry such that let's say some request comes from A which is required to be routed to B but due to some reason our system B was unavailable at that point in time. So SOA is smart enough to you know store those requests with itself and can retry to push those requests to B once it is available so that A need not to submit those requests once again which was difficult to achieve in your point to point integration. So basically this is you know the explanation of that loosely coupled architecture. When we say SOA is a loosely coupled architecture, it is making systems to, to talk to each other in a more agile manner such that you know systems which are being integrated are becoming independent of each other. Well, thank you very much Sumit for such a nice explanation on Oracle SOA or SOA in a very layman's term about SOA as service oriented architecture which is an architecture and loosely coupled. Now this is part one of three part series in getting started with developing and integrating Oracle SOA. Now if you like this video go and leave your comment what more you want to hear about Oracle SOA both in terms of development as well as administration. Now in this video we looked at introduction to SOA where we looked at SOA as loosely coupled and in the next and second part of this three part series we are going to look at services, messages, orchestration and a very high level or in layman's term SOA versus OSB where OSB stands for Oracle Service Bus. And then in third and final lesson we are going to talk about briefly SOAP and REST and introduce you to our main training which is Oracle SOA development training where you can take your career to the next level by learning Oracle SOA. Now if you have not yet registered uh, for getting notification for any future webinars like these and also for part 2, 3 and, and subsequent lessons or free video series go and register yourself on http k21academy.com forward slash webinar dash SOA dash dev. I Atul Kumar with SOA expert Sumit and my entire team at K21 Academy thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in lesson 2.